sand, cement, gravel, and water. The most basic materials that, when combined, create the literal foundation for so much of our modern world. Concrete. Roads, airports, houses, skyscrapers, dams. It's so ubiquitous and takes so many forms that it might be easy to forget about. In fact, the only other thing humans use more than concrete is water. If you divided up all the concrete used around the world each year, every person on the planet would get three tons of it. And people just completely take concrete and cement for granted. You know, I mean, when was the last time you paid attention? Now, see, I'm going to make it so that you're going to be tortured by this now. Every time you look down where you're walking, you're going to see concrete. You'll see it on the walls. It is everywhere. Globally, cement production has increased more than 30-fold since 1950, and China consumed more concrete than the U.S. did during the entire 20th century. Concrete has given rise to modern life, but now there is increasing pressure to change the way we use and make concrete. As cities warm and flood, as biodiversity is reduced, and as water becomes more scarce worldwide, part of the blame is increasingly placed on concrete, the seemingly invisible foundation for our world. Let's first get this point out of the way. Just saying concrete is bad is too simple, right? We actually really need it. We really need to achieve sustainability, like eliminating poverty, improving our cities, improving our infrastructure. Concrete is part of that. The ancient Romans are believed to be the first people to use concrete in their structures. Yet the recipe was lost. Attempts to recreate a version of what the Romans made were not successful until much later. While a man named Joseph Aspton patented what was called Portland Cement in 1824, it was his son, William, who had revolutionized the strength of that cement by adding clinker, or burnt rocks of limestone and clay, to the process in 1843. Cement, which is often mistaken for the same thing as concrete, is actually the necessary ingredient that binds concrete together. It is this cement that has binded the world's concrete for the last 200 years. The U.S. especially took advantage of this material during the population boom after World War II. Yet today, as that infrastructure begins to crumble, there remains no other material that could replace the need for concrete. According to the United Nations, by 2050, about 70% of the world's population is expected to live in urban areas, and over 60% of the land projected to become urban by 2030 is yet to be built. If everyone around the world used the same level of uh, concrete we have here in the developed world, you know, that's literally not sustainable. The negative effects of our concrete addiction can be seen throughout every stage of concrete's life cycle. Concrete, if you remember, is basically just gravel, water, cement, and sand. But the world is actually running out of sand. 200 tons of sand go into building a new house, while a hospital requires 3,000 tons. And a mile of highways uses 15,000 tons of sand. The world is just gobbling up more sand than the Earth can create. And concrete is a major consumer. It's also using more water than the Earth can provide. In 2012, 9% of the total global water distribution went towards the creation of concrete. According to Nature Sustainability, by 2050, 75% of the water demand for concrete production will likely occur in regions that are expected to experience water stress. This is already happening in places like Delhi, India, where a massive urbanization boom is colliding with a water crisis. But it's when these materials come together for mixing that concrete's greatest problems come to a head. The ingredients are poured into a rotating kiln, which heats to over 2600 degrees Fahrenheit. This process is what creates clinker, which is then crushed up and becomes the binding element when cured with water. This clinker is a large part of what makes cement the worst CO2 offender, second only to the agricultural industry. In fact, the sheer volume of global cement production has tipped its CO2 emissions over 8%, making it one of the main driving forces in the acceleration of climate change. If cement were a country, it would rank third in CO2 emissions behind only the US and China. Problems with concrete persist even after it's cured and crafted into our many beloved sprawling cities. 
The entire world is warming, but cities are heating up at an alarming rate. For example, the temperature in a paved city with more than a million people can rise by as much as 22 degrees Fahrenheit. It's called the urban heat island effect, which leads to issues with human health, water quality, but also elevated emissions of greenhouse gases as humans consume more energy to cool down. Covering our cities with concrete and pavement can also lead to increased urban flooding. Without raw earth for rainwater to soak into, and with increasing temperatures, flooding will only get worse. This is what scientists say contributed to the severity of Hurricane Harvey in Houston in 2017. To add insult to injury, concrete begins to crumble at some point, and all that rock has to go somewhere. In 2014, over 500 million tons of construction debris was created, and 70% of that was concrete. And it often ends up clogging our landfills. There is no silver bullet for fixing the issues that concrete and its demands have brought upon the world. But there are a multitude of innovative solutions that have the potential to entirely revolutionize the industry. What's so great about cement and concrete, there really aren't any other materials that are so ubiquitous. That's what makes it a unique solution to the climate challenge because you can have broad impact. Solutions range from directly changing the mixture and chemistry of concrete, which in some cases would allow concrete to bind with less heat, to capturing carbon inside concrete to stop it from being released into the atmosphere. Companies like Solidia altered cement's chemistry to require less heat, and it uses technology that cures concrete with carbon instead of water. While the solutions may be many, it will take time for the concrete industry to take up new technologies. But on the other hand, if we're going to really make headway in dealing with climate change, we're going to have to change our behaviors, and this is no exception. There are also new ways that concrete can be used, as is, to move forward towards those solutions. One thing that people assume is that we're focusing just on how do we lower the environmental impact of making concrete. But I think the other thing that people don't appreciate is that there's a lot of things we can do about with the way we design and maintain our structures that are just as important, if not more. Designing structures to last longer, even throughout natural disasters, can greatly reduce concrete's climate impact. Creating permeable pavement where water can soak through to the ground decreases the risk of urban flooding. All these options show the optimism and action towards more sustainable concrete alternatives. In fact, the last 20 years has seen an 18% drop in carbon dioxide intensity per ton of cement. But there remains much more to do as global CO2 emissions continue to climb. We are going to need to show the you know, decision makers that we value that long-term perspective. Concrete has propelled humanity towards better economies and better health, but it's also careening fast towards doing irreparable damage to the planet. I understand the risk aversion but we, we just, we don't have the time or luxury of not making changes in the way that we do construction. We need people to be aware of this and then start asking for it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe and check out the links below if you want to know more about Concrete's impact on our world.